Well, good morning, everyone. Across all of our congregations, a very, very happy new year to all of you. Trust that you've had some time over Christmas, over that holiday season, just to relax, take stock, and uh, just be ready for this new year, 2023, and all that God's gonna do uh, in our own personal lives, amongst us together, and uh, what I believe he wants to do through Kingdom Faith and uh, who we are as a, a people. So I've been, I've been looking forward to this time, been praying into it. I'm looking forward to our 21 days of prayer and fasting that starts today and all that God's gonna do in our hearts, in our lives, and what I believe in a new way that he's beginning to do through us to all the people around us and beyond as we look to really share our lives, share our faith, and share Jesus with people. Now, today's kind of vision message is, is really entitled Earthing the Vision. We wanna be really, really practical today. Uh, it's very easy for me anyway to talk about kind of big vision and this and that and the other about the nation and nations and what God wants to do. But I believe God really wants us to take the vision that we have and what does it mean to really earth it in our everyday lives. Of course, we're an apostolic church. Uh, we have uh, Kingdom Faith churches around the country. We have uh, partnering and relating churches in this nation, in other nations. And those relationships are growing, developing, they're deepening. And, and I believe that God is saying the same thing to all of us across the family of Kingdom Faith uh, and really wanting us to, to be available, be willing and be agile for what God wants to do in and through our lives together as we really seek uh, the lost in the same way that we seek him. And that's going to kind of unfold as we unpack uh, the message this morning. And it's going to have some very, very practical applications uh, for each one of us uh, in our lives personally. Now, I believe we are in a very, very significant moment in kingdom faith. God never just works year on, year out and kind of here's something for this year, here's something for next year. God is always at work unfolding his purposes. And part of my responsibility, part of leaders' responsibility is to be listening to the Lord, hearing from God, responding to whatever he's saying and making decisions in the light of that. And, and I really appreciate that decisions that either I make or as a leadership team that we make uh, affects all of our lives. And so we, we do that uh, humbly before God. We do that uh, really wanting to know that this is what God is saying and, and not knee jerking in any way to how God wants to lead us and move us forward. Now, over the last five years, we've been through a lot of change in kingdom faith. And I believe it's really important at the start of, of this Vision Sunday to give a context as to why I believe this is such a significant moment that we're in. And as I explained the last five years of what God's been doing to lead us to this point, we'll see why what I believe God is saying about 2023 and where we go from here into the following year and beyond, why now is so, such an important time that we not only hear God, but we respond to him and we really put legs and feet on the vision in our lives and together as kingdom faith. So first, we want to give you a couple of analogies, a couple of pictures that we have. Now, quite a few years ago, around five, six years ago, God gave us uh, a picture of an hourglass. And this hourglass was, was not vertical, it was horizontal, it was sideways. And the first part of it, the really wide part, of it was God was saying, this has been kingdom faith for, for many, many years. This is since it started and how it's grown and developed into this sort of far reaching uh, uh, ministry and church. And as I saw this picture, uh, God said to me that, 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 that represented a certain time, a certain era of kingdom faith. And God was going to take us through a period of time where, you know, you have the very narrow part of an hourglass where all the sand has to kind of come from the, the big part through to the narrow bit out the, the, the other side. And what I believe God was saying to me was that for a period of time, you're going to go through a time where things might feel like they're actually getting smaller or they're shrinking, or even you might think they're going backwards. But I'm going to take you through a period of time where I'm going to 
um, remove some things. I'm going to uh, reset some things and I'm going to reposition you as kingdom faith so that when you come out of the other side, the kingdom faith is still going to have the same heart and vision, the same spirit, the same anointing dynamic and call on it. But what that looks like and how that is expressed in a new era of time and a new generation of time is going to look different than how it has been for 30, 40 years or, or more. And we've been going through that, that time for the last five years or so. There's another a picture that I want to share that, that coincides, that parallels with this. And, and again, it was about five years ago that we had this. And it was of a, a, a large door uh, that was gradually closing. And then in this picture, in a short period of time, a much larger door opened, but there were many other things behind this much larger door. And you know when God says something like, in a short period of time, how long is that? Is it a week? Is it a month? Is it a year? Is it a few years? And, and sometimes you only really know how long that is as you walk through what God is saying. And that picture that God gave about a large door shutting was at the beginning of 2018, which is uh, five years ago. And, and I believe over this last five years, alongside the hourglass and energy, God has been doing some things in us, taking through us, th us through a period of time in kingdom faith where he's been removing some things, resetting some things to reposition us for a, a, a totally new move of the spirit. Now, we're all, we're all aware that faith camp uh, finished a few years ago. 2018 was the last faith camp. Uh, also, the Bible college, we, we felt at the beginning of 2020 that that was going to be the last year of the Bible college. And obviously then COVID hit and we had to close the college as it was. It doesn't mean we're not going to train people any longer, but just the way in which we've been training people is going to change. And some of the, what that's going to look like will unfold over the next year or two when we're further in a new move of the spirit and what God is doing. And then we're going to be more... Uh, ready to train people in, in a relevant way for going forward than we have done for what was right in terms of where we have been. So Faith Camp and the College were a huge part of who we are as, as Kingdom Faith. Obviously, we've moved uh, from Roffey Place as a, as a Bible college and an office base and the base of Kingdom Faith. We've moved to, to this building, Foundry Lane. So just that shift alone is a big shift uh, for Kingdom Faith, not being based at Roffey Place, but being based now here in Foundry Lane. We're now opening the building here every day uh, to become much more of a community hub and to be open and available every day. Roffey Place is now being used by Turning Tides, which many of you know is a homeless organization, which are doing an amazing job in, in working with the homeless, not just in Horsham, but in this region and what that is going to mean. And then in the coming years, uh, moving across from Roffey Place, across the dual carriageway there to whatever facility that we build in the new development in North Horsham, which is now called Mowbray. Now, during this five years, we've been going through this kind of transition in time and, and obviously certain things, if you like, God has removed, like Faith Camp and uh, the college, even using Roffey Place and being based there. It's like God saying, no, I, I'm going to shift some things and even where you're located is going to be uh, changing. It's going to shift. And that's part of helping to change a mindset, a way of working, a way of living and even a focus. And so God has been taking us through a period of time. Now, some things that God said back then also was about faith camp, for example, instead of gathering thousands of people for one week, I want you to be reaching thousands of people every week. Now, we've not moved into that by any stretch in terms of what God is thinking. But as we are at the, the what I believe 2022 was the last year of going through the narrow part of that hourglass and 2023 being the beginning of this much larger door, uh, beginning to open. I believe that we're coming out of that five-year period where God has been removing, resetting and repositioning and God now wants us to begin to move more intentionally and with more focus into what he is speaking to us now about. 
And, and what that requires is some attentional, intentional obedience. Now, we had to be quite intentional about uh, stopping faith camp, about not having the Bible college, about moving out of Roffey Place to come here. All the conversations going on about having a building across the road from where Roffey Place is now and all that that's going to mean for the future generation, if you like, of kingdom faith and what that's going to uh, how that's going to serve and facilitate the, the vision of the life of the church and kingdom of faith going forward. Then also relating to the college, God said, instead of training a few people in one place, I want you to train many people in many places. And so all of that is a process that we are in at this time, okay? And we're just going to begin to come out of that into what God is saying as we go forward. Again, over the last few years, we've been putting into place a discipleship pathway, which for many of you, you'll know, especially as they're on the walls in this building now, our pathway is to know God, live in freedom, discover your purpose, and then make a difference. And it's been really important to get that pathway in place and the various things that make up that pathway because God is thinking in his mind and in his heart about harvest. He's not thinking about just maintaining a church or maintaining something as it has been. He's thinking, no, that it's time for harvest, not just in Horsham and this region, 25 mile radius, but in our nation. And God is doing the same thing in many other churches as he is doing with us in terms of shutting some things down, reordering some things, resetting and repositioning for what God wants to do, for really a totally new move of the Spirit in our nation. And so our primary focus over the last few years as we've been transitioning, as we've been shifting, as God has been working, taking us through this hourglass scenario, through the, the large door to the much larger door from one era of time into a new era of time, we've been focusing really on the second, third and fourth parts of that discipleship pathway, getting them in place, the living in freedom, discover your purpose, make a difference. We've been focusing around those. And I believe that now this significant moment that we're in is that God is saying, right, now I really want you to begin to focus on that first step, which opens the door to the whole discipleship pathway as you go forward. And I want you to focus really on know God, as in K-N-O-W, knowing God and reaching the harvest. And that phrase that God gave us, with the same heart that you seek me, I want you to seek the lost. Now, we know that seeking God is part of the DNA, the essence is part of who we are. We're always going to seek him because Everything we do is about Him, is to bring Him glory, it's to glorify Him. So we're going to go after Jesus. Our heart is for Jesus. Our love is for Jesus. We want to serve Him, seek Him, know Him. But within that, He's saying, now guys, with the same heart that you have for me and that you seek me, I want you also to seek those that I have a heart for, which is those that don't yet know me. And so... During 2022, that last year really of going through that narrow time of, of the last year before this much larger door really begins to open and whatever's going to be behind that in terms of harvest and whatever that's going to mean, God has been preparing our hearts. And during 2022, we went through the whole book of Romans, God giving us the bigger picture of his plan and purpose and what he's doing about the gospel and what that's all about, his heart for the Jewish people that he's not finished with them yet, encompassing also that culture of grace and love and the context in which as people are born again and get saved, that they become part of a culture of grace and love, a people that are not going to judge, condemn and criticise, but we're going to embrace people initially where they are and where they're at. And as God meets with them, saves them, transforms them, that we're then going to help get involved in their lives and help to, to not only them come to know Jesus, but also then disciple them and they become everything that God has called them to be. So as we look for a few minutes at this this pivotal moment, this significant moment we're in and what our next step is, which is know God with the same heart that we seek him, that we love him, we want to seek the lost. And one of the phrases that God has given me was that is, guys, there needs to be some intentional obedience, some intentional action. Everything we do always comes in the context of our relationship with him, our love for him. 
And because we love Jesus, we want to do whatever he's doing. We want to do whatever he commands us, whatever he's saying to us. And therefore, in the context of our love for him, we want our obedience to be really intentional. And so there's a few things here in terms of our focus for 2023 as we step into this new year that we really want to spend some time unpacking, putting some legs on and, and some goals too in our own personal lives and together so that and put in our diaries even because what you what you schedule for gets done. What you don't schedule for doesn't get done. And I believe that God wants us to schedule for some things in our lives personally and together so that we have a focus, we have targets, we're praying into things. We want to hit the target because we want to see God's word and God's promises and God's commands actually come into fruition and be fruitful and effective in and through our lives. So one of the first focus of 2023 is I believe God wants us to personalize the Great Commission that we need to understand the Great Commission starts with me. The Great Commission is the road to making disciples, okay? The Great Commission is the starting point of us sharing our life, sharing our faith, and then sharing Jesus with people. So God wants to personalize the Great Commission for us. Sometimes when we use that word Great Commission, we think, well, somebody's going to be doing it somewhere. I wonder who's going to be doing it. And God's saying, no, no, this is for you. This is for me. This is for each one of us to personalize the Great Commission. Secondly, the priesthood of the believer. What does that mean? It means everyone has a part to play. Everyone matters. Every life is important to this. There, there, there's no people sitting on the bench waiting to be substituted into the game. We're all in the game. We're all on the field. We're all part of God's strategy, God's plan and God's purposes, okay? The priesthood of every believer that God has given me, God has given you, God has given each of us the responsibility of being a believer, part of this priesthood of believers for the Great Commission to be personalized in our lives to see other people's lives affected and impacted. The third thing then, I'm gonna respond with some intentional action, intentional obedience. So with the same heart that I love Jesus, with the same heart that I seek him, I'm gonna to respond to what he's saying and actually then seek the lost, friends, neighbours, work colleagues, family, people that don't know Jesus. We're going to unpack this a bit more this morning, but also over the next couple of months, we're going to be unpacking this with some really practical steps uh, as a church. As I said before, intentional obedience, what gets scheduled gets done. What doesn't get scheduled doesn't get done. So Jesus schedules things. We can see that over the last five years, we've been working through a schedule, a plan that God has been working out to get us to this point here where we are, ready to continue his plan, his schedule and what he wants to see happen. And so he wants us to respond to him today and over these coming weeks and months and into the rest of the year so that his schedule, his plan, his purposes can be outworked in the way that he wants to. Then the fourth thing, is disciple making disciples. God has called us not only to be a disciple ourselves that follow him, but he also wants us to be a disciple that makes disciples. And this is where our discipleship pathway comes in and where the beginning of that time for know God, that first step really begins to, to kick in to action. So God wants to, over this next period of time, he wants to shift the culture of who we are. OK, he wants to shift us from how we've been moving and where we're going. He wants to continue to shift that into a movement, OK, of disciple making disciples as a people. That, that our culture, our DNA begins to take on more and more a movement, uh, a direction of disciple making disciples. In John 4, 34 to 36, Jesus said this. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. It's interesting there. It doesn't say my food is to know the will, okay? So Jesus is not so much interested in how much knowledge that we have, okay? Because in the West, there's a lot of knowledge about God. But what, what Jesus was really interested in is my food, the thing that makes me tick, the thing that gives me sustenance, the thing that... That, that moves me in my life, the thing that is the food of my life is to do the will of him who sent me 
and to finish his work. Then in verse 35, he then says, do not say four months more than the harvest. I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Now, the brilliant thing is there is we are the sowers, okay? We share our lives, share our faith and share Jesus. We're the sowers, okay? God is the reaper. He's the one that saves people. He's the one that reveals who he is. The Holy Spirit is the one that does the convicting, does the work in people's hearts. So we partner, we're the sowers, he's the reaper. And so in these verses, it's brilliant that Jesus said, I seek to do the will of the one who sent me. And as I sow, he is going to reap. And, and Jesus has called us into that harvest field, into that partnership with him. And that in 2023, we want to be a church that not only knows the will, but increasingly we are doing the will of the one who not only sent Jesus, but he's also sent us. Because the Great Commission in Matthew 28 is all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. This is what Jesus says. Therefore, he then says to his disciples, you and I, now go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and then teach them. The word teach them is show them by example, teach them to obey, to then do the will of the one who has not only sent you, but also is now sending them, okay? Uh, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you and I'll be with you to the very end of the age. So we've already been sent, we've already been commissioned. And so we wanna step more and more into that as a church, as kingdom faith, locally, regionally, nationally, and in other nations than we ever have before, okay? So it's not what we know that bears fruit. It's what we do with what we know that becomes fruitful and effective that bears fruit. So there's three intentional steps, okay, initially that we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks, next couple of months and begin to move in more as a church. Three intentions, and I've already mentioned them a few times. The first one is to share your life. The second one is to share your faith. And the third one is to share Jesus. Now, we're going to unpack these and spend some Sundays in the coming six to eight weeks unpacking this stuff. We're going to make it very interactive. There's going to be lots of conversations on a Sunday morning. This isn't just going to be messages from the front to everybody. We're going to unpack this. We're going to do some work together. We're going to face some of our fears, our apprehensions, uh, some of our, I don't really know how to share my faith, talk about Jesus. I'm a bit freaked out about opening up my life. We're going to face some of that stuff. We're going to talk through some of that. We're going to workshop through some of it. And, and we're going to put some steps and some feet together, not just individually trying to do stuff, but together we're going to put some feet on this thing so that we are intentionally, because we love Jesus and we want to obey his commands, do what he's telling us to be doing. So we're going to share our lives. So that means we're going to have to make time and space if we're going to share our lives. It means building friendships or building on the friendships that we already have with people that don't know Jesus. It might mean we need to step outside of our circle a little bit, okay, and get into other people's circle. We might need to invite people into our circle uh, of our life, okay, to build those friendships and relationships. It's going to mean inviting others. It might mean creating a bit of community around where we live. Uh, Jane and I have been doing a little bit of that where we live the last couple of years, just doing a few things for our community, inviting people and just people connecting, building relationships. And in that context, we, you end up talking about your life and what you do and all that kind of stuff. And so there might be some creating community around where you live. It might mean some serving others around you in different ways. We know that people around our lives that don't know Jesus some people have a lot of stuff going on and they don't know how to cope with it. And we do have the answer. We have some wisdom. We have some life experience with God. We have some stories of answers of what we've seen God do in our lives that we can share with others to say, hey, there's a hope. There is a way through this. There is someone who can help you in this whole situation. So we're going to begin to share our lives, open up our lives, open up our homes 
uh, in different ways. We're going to unpack that. Some of you might be thinking, oh man, okay, this is getting a bit close to the bone. And, and it, it's okay. We're all freaked out. I'm freaked out as much as you are. And, but we're going to be sharing stories, sharing our, our, our challenges, but we're going to be moving through this together. So we're going to share our life, open up our lives, not just one another, but to those around us that don't yet know Jesus. Also, as we begin to share our lives, we're going to begin to share our faith. You know, as you begin to build relationships with people, just conversations naturally start happening about your life, about life in general, about what's going on. And, and before you know where you are, what you believe and, and some of your principles and convictions, they just come into the conversations. And we begin to share our faith in a very natural way then, what we believe and why we live like we do. It will just begin to come into the conversation as we build friendships and we build those relationships with people around our, our lives. And coming into that sharing our faith, we'll, we'll naturally begin sharing your story. Uh, maybe how you came to faith, how you came to know Jesus. And, and you naturally begin to share your story. We're going to do some of that as we come into February as well, as to what does it mean to share your story and, and some of the things God's doing in your life. How do you do that in very natural ways in those relationships and in conversations, okay? So we're going to be sharing our life, just begin to do that in a, in a fresh way, build those relationships, open up our lives, to then begin to share our faith, which is really the next step that will very naturally begin to, to happen. And then thirdly, in those contexts, to share Jesus, okay? And, and what do we mean by that? It's, it's in those relationships, friendships, they get, they're going to get to the point where, where those conversations, sooner or later, will get to the point where, where you're really going to talk about who Jesus is, what he can do in someone's life, and what it means to really know Jesus. And... And to the point where you might say, hey, do you want to give your life to Jesus, to a friend of yours? Um, and your friends now are people that maybe were a neighbour a little while ago, but now over the next few months become your friends. Maybe a work colleague that is a colleague over the next few months is going to become more of a friend. Maybe there's someone else you meet down the gym or in whatever club you might be part of that might be someone who goes there that might become a friend over the next few weeks and months. And... So these contexts are going to be very friendship-centric in that. And, and before you know where we are, we're going to be talking about Jesus and, and then possibly even saying to someone, hey, do you want to give your life to Jesus if they don't ask you that before? Part of sharing Jesus might be that you invite them on an Alpha course or you invite them on a Sunday morning or you invite them to something where you know somebody's going to be giving their testimony. That might be part of it. But we're going to look at that and unpack that. But just to give you a little bit of a glimpse of where we're going, we're sharing our lives, opening our lives, sharing our faith as we develop that and move forward in that to then share Jesus, but very intentionally with some goals and some steps towards that. So some goals about, so what's, what's a goal to share my life? Well, I might just literally invite some neighbours around for tea or for a cup of tea or for a barbecue or something, maybe not in the winter, but in your garden, but you invite them around for dinner or something. Maybe that's literally just a goal, the first step. And, and the intention isn't to try and get them saved on that first thing. It's literally just to build relationship and become friends as you begin to move forward. So we're going to be to share our life, to share our faith, and then share Jesus. Now, we're going to use a, a little tool, a resource to help us in that good friend of Jane and mine called John Kirkby. Uh, many of you will know CAP, Christians Against Poverty. And John Kirkby started that over 20 years ago. And uh, two years ago, passed that on to a bunch of guys on his team as it was then. And he started a whole new kind of uh, uh, ministry stroke movement called I-61M, Isaiah 61 movement. And it's based around the first few verses of I-61, where it says that the Spirit of God is upon us. He's anointed us to preach the gospel to the poor and to set the captive free. And those verses that go through Isaiah 61. And they've put a little app together, a tool, a resource, okay, which covers these things of sharing your life, sharing your faith and sharing Jesus. And what we're going to do over the next few weeks is encourage every one of you, okay, to download this app on your phone, okay, and it's got some really, really practical little steps on it to help all of us individually. But also we're going to encourage all of us to connect with a few other people. OK, two, three, four, five other people. And, and, and in a kind of 
little group like that of friends that you have in the life of the church uh, to walk this through together in terms of sharing our life, sharing our faith and sharing Jesus and downloading this app, setting some goals initially. How am I going to share my life? What are some of the goals to begin to share my life? What's that going to look like? What am I going to schedule? I'm going to put in my diary. When am I going to invite my friend, work, colleague, neighbour, whoever it is, to whatever you're going to be doing? And we're going to start there. But, you know, when you do something with others in community, when you do something with others and we're all in this together, that, that, and you champion one another, that inspires each other. There's some really healthy accountability in that because we say, how are you doing? How's it going? Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I love that story. Well done. Brilliant. Keep going. And, and we need that with one another. Uh, we know some people are just brilliant evangelists and they'll just talk to anybody, you know, anywhere, anytime. But for most of us, including me, I don't find it that easy. And I know I need others around me to encourage me, inspire me and tell me stories of what they're doing and how they've done things. Like, Well, brilliant. If you could do that, I could do that then. And, and that's how we want to walk through this together. So we're going to encourage you all to download this i61M some of you might have been doing it now on your phone, you're on, on the, the app thing, on your whatever whatever platform you have, and you're on there looking for i61M. Oh, I've got it already, and you're already downloading it. Brilliant. But we're all going to download that because we want to do this not just individually, but together, okay, as, as a church. Best things happen in community. We want to do this as a community of people together, all right? And we'll unpack a bit more about this next week. Also, within all of that then, homes, our homes are going to become increasingly central and important to what God is doing. Because if we're going to invite people into the circle of our lives, okay, the circles that we have, then often that's going to be around our homes uh, in our lives. It might be that you first start with inviting people out for coffee or out for lunch or something. But then you're going to be, uh, go beyond that because you want to invite people more into your life and into your home. And as people give their lives to the Lord in the coming weeks and months, okay, where are they really going to get discipled? They're really going to get discipled in your home, in your life, in my home, in my life, okay? Or maybe in their home, okay, because they invite you around to their home. But in homes, homes are going to become much more central to what is happening in these coming, not just weeks and months, but in the next coming years, I believe, homes are going to be really, really central to what God is doing. We're going to see stadiums full of people in this nation coming together, right, because of the scale of what God's going to be doing. But we're also, our homes are going to be full of people because we have a culture of making disciples, a daily lifestyle and culture of the way that we are living as believers, as Christians and as a church. Within all of that, I believe church in the home is also going to become even more central in these coming months and years as to how God is wanting to express community, fellowship, disciple making. And we're going to unpack some of that a bit more as we go through the year and what that might look like. But homes are going to be really, really central in this, this, this uh, coming uh, year and coming years in terms of what God's going to be doing. So what are we talking about? Right at the heart of everything, we're talking about making disciples culture, a culture of disciple making disciples. So whether that is in a, 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 a building like this, whether it is in our homes, uh, in church in the home on a Sunday morning, whether that is in a small group context, okay, we want making disciples and a culture of disciple making disciples to be at the heart of, of, of what we do. Now, just quickly then, so what is a disciple? A disciple is someone who's growing spiritually, growing this way in their relationship with God. They're growing relationally with those in the body around them. They're growing relation that way, but they're also growing in their witness, okay, sharing their life, faith and Jesus with those around them that don't know Jesus. That is a disciple, somebody who's growing spiritually, relationally and in their witness, in their mission, if you like. Those three aspects make a disciple of Jesus, okay. And in anything we do, whether it's Sunday morning in a building, in a home, or whether it's a small group context, okay, there's going to be three key elements to everything that we do. No matter where you turn up to, how we gather, whether in the large or in the small, there's three key elements that are going to uh, take place every time we gather. The first one is we're going to look back, okay? What does that mean? It means... 
in the last week or in the last couple of weeks, what has been happening? What has God been doing? What's been going on in our lives? As we look back, what has God been doing? Story, testimony, okay? Now, we all know that stories and testimonies encourage each other, encourage faith in other people. So we're going to be in, in, so even on a Sunday morning when we rock up, one aspect of what's going to happen on a Sunday morning when we're all together is we're going to have a look back time, okay, where we're going to be sharing with each other in the room, around tables, okay, so what's God been doing, what's some stories of what's been happening in our lives, particularly as we are sharing our lives, sharing our faith and sharing Jesus, what's been happening in that area, well, and you might say, well, well, my goal over the last couple of weeks was literally just to invite a friend round for dinner, and they came, it was brilliant, we had a great time, we just laughed a lot, we talked a lot, it was just fantastic. If that was your goal, absolutely brilliant, okay? And, and so we're gonna look back, we're gonna tell some stories, share some of what God has been doing. We're also gonna be looking up, okay? What does that mean? Two things, firstly, we're gonna worship, we want to look up and worship God. And when we've heard some stories that we're going to worship with thanksgiving, God, look what you're doing. This is brilliant. This is amazing. We're going to worship, but we're also going to look up in terms of God, what are you saying today? What are you saying this morning? What are you saying into my life? Okay. So we're going to look back, testimony stories. We're going to look up. We're going to worship. We're going to listen to God, hear the word. What's he saying? But that's the second part. And then thirdly, we're going to look out. Okay. And look out means... What, what does, whatever God said this morning, what does that mean for me? What does that look like for me in my life? That's one aspect to looking out. What's that going to look like for me this week? But also the looking out is what is sharing my life, faith and Jesus going to look like this week in the next couple of weeks? So very, very practical steps. So no matter whether you, whether it's Sunday morning gathering in a building like this, whether it's Sunday morning gathering in a home or whether it is a small group, okay, meeting in the week, Every time we gather with others, okay, we're going to incorporate those three key things. Look back, look up and look out. Because every time we gather, we want to talk about what has God been doing? How has my witness been going? We want to hear what God is saying into our lives and what that looks like next. And then what am I looking to see happen in the next week or two with sharing my life, sharing my faith, sharing Jesus? How many of you are up for this? I can hear everybody going, yeah, you can just hear a roar in every congregation right now. Some of you might be thinking, oh my word, this is getting very, very in focus. Absolutely. Why? Because we don't just want to be hearers. We don't just want to know what God wants. We want to be doers, okay? And I believe that God wants to put some really healthy peer, relational uh, encouragement, accountability, and, and championing one another in place so that we're all in this together. And I'm as part of this as much as you are, guys, okay? And uh, there are some things God has already been telling Jane and I to be doing that we're seeking to do, stepping in, doing already in relation to this, sharing our life, faith in Jesus stuff. And we want to do this more and more together as, as a church in the coming few weeks, months, and years. Why? because we want to become a disciple making disciples people and everything that God wants to do. So let's kind of try to bring this into land a bit this morning. Okay, Joshua chapters one to three, not going to read them all because we haven't got time, but there's some key things in these three chapters. I'm just going to pull out some, some bullet point things. Okay, Now, the context in which this, this, these three chapters happen is that the Israelites have just been through the wilderness for 40 years. Okay. It was a miracle time. God incredibly provided miracle time, miracle season, amazing. But they were coming to a really defining moment where they were going to cross over into the promised land, where they were going to take possession of all that God had promised them and saying, I want to give you and where you're going to, what you're going to inherit. Okay, so that's the moment. Now, remember to cross the Red Sea, to be free from the Egyptians, there was a cloud by day and a fire by night, okay? And God gave us a word at the last faith camp through Pastor Andy Elms. And the word that God gave was move with the cloud. He brought this word, guys, the cloud is moving, move with the cloud. Now, God has been leading us over this last five years 
and he's got us to this point right now. And I believe that God is saying now, hey guys, the cloud is moving, move with it. Keep moving, keep moving, don't stop. But you need to begin to move into things in a more intentional way uh, as you have been, but in a more focused way. So here's some key things from Joshua chapters one, two, and three. Joshua said, hey guys, get your supplies ready. Okay, because we're moving out. Get your supplies ready. Get everything ready. We're, we're, we're on the move. We're on the move. Okay, so what's God saying? Hey, guys, be prepared to move. Things aren't just going to stay the same. And I'm not, I can't, I believe God's saying, I can't move in the way I want to if you just stay where you are and you don't give me room and space to move. So it's get your supplies ready. Just get ready. Prepare yourself for movement. Just stir yourself up. Get ready for movement. Second thing, he then said, spy out the land. He said, go and have a look and see what I'm taking you into. Uh, there's a couple of reasons. The main reason is when they spied out the land, they went and saw what was there, okay? What is God saying to us? Look, if you're going to spy out the land, you're going to weigh up the cost. See what is before you. Just be going with your eyes wide open as to what you're going into, okay? So be prepared to move. Spy out the land. Weigh up the cost, Okay. And I'm sure everybody in the light of what we've been saying, everybody I'm believing in our hearts, we're all saying, come on, yeah, we want to see God move in an unprecedented day. We want to be part of a harvest of what God's doing. We want to see people around us giving their lives to the Lord. Yes, I want to be part of being a disciple, making disciple. Yeah, we might have loads of things that sound, I'm freaking out. What's that going to mean? But in our hearts, I believe everybody, well, I think we're all saying, yeah, come on, let's go. And so be prepared to move. We weigh up the cost. Because it's going to mean change. It's going to mean shift. It's going to mean something different in our lives, okay? Then he said, consecrate yourselves. What does that mean? It means make a decision. It means I'm going to decide. I'm going to yield. I'm going to surrender to what God's saying. I want to consecrate myself. I want to position myself for what God is saying and what he wants to do in me and through me, okay? So get your supplies ready, prepare to move, weigh up the cost, consecrate yourself, surrender, yield to, to, to what God's saying. And then the next part, he said, take up the ark. So in order for them to go across the Jordan into the promised land, the thing was in flood, in full flow. And God said, as you take up the ark, pick it up. And, and as the priests put their feet in the water, in the river, the river's going to stop. It's going to part so you can move, move across on dry ground. OK, but they had to pick up the ark. What was the ark? The ark uh, represented the glory of God. OK, and. Also, it represented the presence of God for them. Now, the ark had three things in there. It had the, the, the two stone tablets, okay, the Ten Commandments, okay, that's one aspect. It also had Aaron's rod and it had the bowl of manna. Now, they're really important as we go forward in, in terms of what God's saying. So, if, if the ark represents the glory of God and the presence of God, which are two different things, we haven't got time to go into that now, okay, it's to do with worship, the fear of the Lord and reverence. So we want to move forward in reverence, in awe. We're going to continue to seek him, worship him, honour him in every way. But the Ten Commandments were in there. What were the Ten Commandments? What do they represent? They represented the Word of God and the ways of God. OK, so we want to continue carrying, moving forward. We want to go forward in the Word of God and in the ways of God. OK, and part of the ways of God going forward is to do the will of God, which is this step one of our discipleship pathway to know God, right? So we want to walk in his word and walk in his ways. The second thing was Aaron's rod. Now, what did Aaron's rod represent? It represented authority, God's authority, and it represented the miraculous, okay? And as we go forward, God is releasing a fresh authority for us to outwork, to see outwork what he's saying to us. But along with that authority, there's going to be miracles. When they responded to the word of the Lord, they did what God said and they, they picked up the ark, they put their feet in the water, the miraculous started to happen. The waters parted. They could begin to move across into what God was going to do through them in the promised land. So the supernatural begins to happen. God activity gets released in a fresh way when we respond to what he's saying. Then there was the bowl of manna. What was that? That was God's provision and it represented his provision. God provided food, manna all through the 40 years they were in the wilderness. 
and that bold of manner represents God's provision. So as we go forward, he is our provision, our provider for everything that we need in the face of everything, whether it's wisdom, whether it is discernment, whether it is boldness, whether it is confidence, whatever it is, whether it's the supernatural, God's power to heal people, he, he is our provision going forward, okay? Now, the next thing in, in these three chapters is at one point, Aaron, um, Joshua said, hey, everybody gather around and listen to the words of the Lord. When God speaks, it releases faith, okay? Then he says to them, whatever God's saying, do what he says. What does that mean? Obedience. Faith and obedience go together. When God speaks, he releases faith and he releases faith so that we can then act, we can then do whatever he says, which is the obedience that is worked out. So faith and obedience go together. And then what happened as they did what he did, supernatural activity started to take place. And we can see that with Jericho, the first city that they took. In the natural, it's nuts to march around a fortified city and then once every day and then on the seventh day, seven times. And if you give a shout, it's all going to fall down. I mean, that's ridiculous in, in with, with man's reason. But yet when they did what God said, there was supernatural activity that was Release. And so I believe as we respond to what God is saying to us to share our lives, share our faith and share Jesus, there's going to be some supernatural activity released for, for people getting saved, people getting set free, people being healed, people being delivered. God is going to move in increasing ways, okay? And one of the things that God spoke to me about a few weeks ago was this. He, he asked me a question. He said, what comes first? Um, a move of the Spirit or your obedience? Now we can pray for a move of the spirit and say, God, move by your spirit, move by your spirit. But God is saying, yeah, I, I'm repositioning you. I want you to make space and make room for me by sharing your life, sharing your faith and sharing Jesus so that I can move by my spirit in a fresh way through your lives in a way that I want to. And so we know that whenever God speaks, our obedience is, is comes before there's a release of the Spirit. And I believe God is speaking to the church in our nation at this time. And as we as the church in this nation respond to him and obey what he's saying, we will see a fresh move of his Spirit in an unprecedented way, okay? So, one picture for you, picture of a battlefield that God gave me. On this battlefield, there were quite a number of rows that were right at the front, ready to move, ready to go. And they were like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Loads of people along this front line, ready. Then there were a whole bunch of people behind those, quite a number of rows that were kind of all dressed in battle fatigue, all ready to go on one level in terms of how they looked, but they were weighing up the cost. They were kind of, they, they realised what this was going to mean, but they were like, do I really want to give my life to this? Do I really want to give my life to the purposes of God? In my head, of course I do, but actually in my heart, do I really want to go there? Do I really want to make space for what God wants to do? Do I really want things to have to shift in my life and make room? So there were many people in that that were weighing up the cost, weighing up the cost. And then there was a third group of people that were at the back of the first two groups who were just wandering around, still had all the battle fatigue on, but the clothing and everything, but they were a bit kind of like, not really, they just wanted everything to carry on as it has been. Well, I don't really want that. I just want, you know, and, and actually they were getting taken out, okay, of, of the battle and, and what needed to take place. And I believe that God wants every one of us to be in those front rows, right on the front of what God's doing, saying, okay, God, I'm not sure what it's going to mean. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be encouraged. It's going to be brilliant. And I want to be right that front row. And I believe that's where God wants us to be. And, and maybe over the next few weeks in during our prayer and fasting, God's going to be working in all of our hearts as we spend time worshiping him, seeking him, pressing in there in, in different ways, that God will be working in our hearts, readying us even more to say yes and respond to all that he's saying and doing at, in, this, in this moment. So as we come into the prayer and fasting, okay, Prayer and fasting always has to have a focus. And like a gun, it has to have a target. A gun without a target, we're just going to shoot into the air aimlessly and we're not going to hit anything. So our prayer and fasting must have a target, it must have a focus. And <clears throat> the primary focus of our prayer and fasting during this time, as we seek the Lord, okay, is going to be praying into those around us 
that don't know Jesus and allowing God to work in our hearts. So the focus of our prayer is going to be a breakthrough for salvations, a breakthrough for healings and miracles. Whenever the gospel is shared, there's always signs and wonders that accompany the preaching of the word, okay? And so we're going to be praying into seeing breakthrough for souls, for salvation, for healings and for miracles, that God sets people free, delivers people as they are giving their lives to him and that the power of God is at work in that Way. So that's going to form the essence of our prayer and fasting, the focus of it over the next few weeks, okay? And in Isaiah 58, verses 6 onwards, it talks about the kind of fast that God has chosen. The first five verses are about fasting, but people end up quarrelling and because the fasting is not God-focused, it's about them and their lives. Whereas in verse 6, God says, isn't this, is not this the kind of fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness and injustice, to undo the heavy burdens, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. There's some other things that we'll come to in a moment there, but our prayer and fasting is basically to see breakthroughs in that way for wickedness and injustice to be changed, burdens to be broken off people, set the captive and the oppressed free, to break yokes off people. Fasting is for breakthrough, for release of God through our lives into other people's lives. And it has very, very cool, very practical outworking as well. As we go into verse seven, it says, is it also not to share your bread with the hungry that you bring, your uh, that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? This is where homes again are gonna be really important. When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide from your own flesh. I think it's brilliant that Rafi is being used by turning tides because it, it, it's still our building, but it's being used to, to help clothe the naked and those that are wandering, those that don't have a home uh, in that way. And I know some of you already volunteered to help out there too. Verse eight, then as we do these things, your light will break forth like the morning, your healing will spring forth speedily and your righteousness which actually the righteousness of God is doing the will of God will then break forth before you, shall go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. There's many other promises in the rest of Isaiah 58 that happen when we fast in the way that God is talking to us about and then the actions that relate to it that then begin to happen. And so there's spiritual ramifications, implications, and there's practical impl Im, uh, implications to everything that God is saying and doing. So what is God doing? He's leading us into a fasted life. What does that mean? A fasted life is a focused, purpose-led life. And that's what God is leading us into increasingly as kingdom faith. A fasted life, focused and purpose-led, which includes prayer and fasting. And so over the next few weeks, okay, yes, we're going to be encountering God on Tuesday nights together here in Horsham, encounter night. Wednesday nights locally, we're going to have prayer nights and just praying and, and for breakthrough and release and for salvations and for harvest and miracles, okay? Um, there is going to be a prayer meeting here every weekday, 1 p.m. to 1.45, if you can make that and be part of that. But there's two other key things I want to bring to your attention, okay? One is our, 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 what we're going to be reading in terms of the Word, our daily reading every day. Now, during the prayer and fasting, starting today, uh, January the 8th, we're going to be reading through Psalm 119 over the next 22 days, okay? I know we finished the fasting on Saturday uh, three weeks time, but on that Sunday will be the last one of the, 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 the Psalm 119. Psalm 119 is broken down actually into 22 sections. And Psalm 119 is all about um, the word of God, the ways of God, the statutes of God, the laws of God, the purposes of God, the whole thing. And it's it's then how you live those out and how you you practically put action to those things. And so what I wanna encourage you all to do Every day, uh, whichever section of 1 Psalm 119 that we're doing is, is read it, reflect on it, okay? Which means to meditate, okay? So read it, but then reflect on it. Go through it, meditate on it. What does it really mean? Pray through it, okay? And then the third R, so it's read, reflect, and then respond. And maybe even write down what, what is an action point for me today in relation to what these six or seven verses are in Psalm 119, okay? So we wanna read, reflect, and respond. 
And I encourage all of you, just build that into your time with the Lord every day, okay? And even if it's part of your fasting uh, time, one of your fasting times uh, in the day, use it as part of that to read, reflect and pray and, and respond, okay? Psalm 119. The other thing is we want to encourage everyone to be part of a prayer triplet, okay? Get with a, a couple of other people uh, and, and pray together. Pray for one another during this time. It doesn't mean you're going to meet every day or try and connect every day, but maybe two or three times a week, get with someone else uh, or with a couple of other people and form some sort of prayer triplet or twos or threes or fours if that works for you, whatever is going to work, two, three or four, okay? Get with some others and pray together each uh, two or three times a week. Encourage each other. Tell some stories. What God is doing in you, what he's saying to you, what he's showing you. Pray for one another, but also... One of the reasons to do this, okay, is to be praying into your sharing life, sharing faith and sharing Jesus. Praying into some of the goals that you're going to begin to set, you know, in terms of inviting a friend round or whatever that might look like for you. And as you download that app and begin to look at it and, and some of the tips and things on there that can help you, okay, we, we want to bring that into those triplets, those quads, if you like, prayer triplet, prayer quads, if you like, to put some feet on the vision and on the legs of what we're doing, because that's likely to carry on. We want, we want to encourage these prayer things to carry on into February, into March, into April. And maybe that becomes a group where, where where you form not a small group as such in that way but it's a, but it's a group that you're forming together and you might meet once a month you might zoom each other once a month to encourage inspire and help one another with really sharing your life sharing your faith and sharing Jesus and it gives a real focus point to the prayer and praying for one another encouraging you know championing each other on in this whole sharing our life sharing our faith and sharing Jesus I've said a lot and it's probably taken quite a bit of time but I believe it's really, really important. So here's our moment where the rubber hits the road, if you like. We're stepping into a new era. One era is closed. It's finished. It's gone. It's done with 40, 50 years, not just in kingdom faith, but I believe in the church, in the nation. An era is finished and God is opening up a new era of time for the church and what God wants to do. So we're stepping into a new era. Question is, here's a couple of questions. Is this what I really want? And secondly, am I prepared to make room? Do I really want this? And am I prepared to make room? And I'm sure in all of our hearts, we're going, yeah, I really want this. And am I prepared to make room? And thirdly, what needs to change in me for this to happen, for me to step into this? Now, you don't necessarily need to answer all those and, and try and work out what needs to change. I believe over the next few weeks, God's going to be working in all of us. But if we literally just say in our response to the Lord, yeah, Father, this is what I want. I don't fully understand everything it means, but this is I want to walk with you and with everybody else in this new era in the way that you want me and you want us to as a people. Am I prepared to make room? Father, just work in my heart so that I, my answer to that is yes and whatever that's going to mean and look like. And God will take each of us on a journey, what that looks like, okay? It doesn't have to look the same as someone else. It just needs to look what it needs to look like in relation to what God is saying to each of us. And then God will do the work in our hearts as we say yes to him. And then the fourth thing in our, in our rubber hits the moment moment is, Holy Spirit, would you lead me? Holy Spirit, lead me. Because when you lead me and, and I respond, there's grace, there's everything that I need to respond to you. And as we do that together, uh, there's going to be a fresh release of your spirit uh, amongst us. So let's just take a moment to pray, shall we? Okay, this morning. Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for the journey you've taken us on as kingdom faith for, for decades. But I thank you for particularly this last five years where you have been removing some things, resetting who we are, and repositioning us for this moment now. So that as you said to us five years ago, if you carry on faith camp, it will get in the way of what I'm doing, not serve it. And I want faith camp to finish because I want to do something totally new. There's a fresh move in my spirit that is coming to this nation and you've got to make room for me and for what I want to do the way I want to do it. And so Father, I believe we're right at the beginning of that large door opening 
of the hourglass opening up in it for this new era. And Father, I thank you that there's your grace for us to say yes, your grace for us to respond. And Father, I thank you that this morning as, as we say yes to you, as we just set ourselves for the next three weeks, 21 days of prayer and fasting and all that that incorporates and involves, as we set ourselves for 2023 to begin to share our lives, share our faith and share Jesus. Holy Spirit, would you take a hold of me? Would you take a hold of us? Would you lead us step by step? Father, I thank you that you continue to work in all of our hearts, whatever you might need to do in any of us that is unique to each one of us. You continue to work in our hearts and lives. Do whatever you want to do and need to do in each of us. That as we worship, encounter, meet with you, as we pray, as we get in there with you, as we pray together, and as we seek to put legs on what you're saying, you would lead us to share our lives, to share our faith and to share Jesus. We thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do in 2023 and beyond. In your mighty name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. What I want to encourage you to do right now, okay, for the next few minutes before we sort of bring things to a close is just turn to a couple of other people, okay? A couple of other people, just turn to them right now and just take, a, a, a say, a one minute each just to share with them off the back of what I've just been sharing, what, what's the first impression that you get from God? What's that first response? What is buzzing in you? Just share that with somebody else, okay? One minute each, literally, okay? Be really succinct. And then I just want you to quickly pray for one another and bless one another as we move into this prayer and fasting time. Look forward to seeing you on Tuesday evening as we encounter Jesus together and all that God is gonna do. Bless you.